let's talk about drawing portraits with colour pencils. Now I actually strongly believe there is a kind of recipe for drawing really good portraits. There's a few key steps that I always follow. Get these right and I don't think portraits are as hard as you might think. Now I'm hoping to show you the key points in this video. If you want to go through this in a lot more detail then check out my latest Skillshare course. I go through all of the points I will cover in this video, but a lot more thoroughly. And there's a few extra things that I can show you as well. If you check out the link in the description, you can get a free 30 day trial to Skillshare, which will be more than enough time to complete the course. And as always, this will also be available on my Patreon. All right, so let's start with the first step of my process. Every portrait that I draw, I work from a reference photo. So the first thing I need to do is get a good reference. I find a surprising amount of people try to draw from either a reference photo with awful light or something that's surprisingly blurry. The main thing you're looking for in a reference photo is really good contrast. You want a photo like this rather than like this. I also find it looks best if the photo is taken at eye level. So if, for example, you were taking a photo of a child, you'd want to get down to their level. Now, I can't stress enough how important it is to get a good reference. If you get a bad reference, it's going to be very hard to create a good drawing. So once you've got your good reference, you want to create some sketch outlines. So this is a very light sketch, just marking out what's going to need to go where. And I like to do this with something called the grid method. This is where you have a grid on your reference photo and you draw a grid on your drawing paper and you just draw what's in each individual square. You're gonna end up with a much more accurate sketch. And in fact, what I like to do with portraits is maybe draw an even smaller grid on the face. And that will really help me to get the key features definitely in the right place. Now it's worth noting that so that it shows on camera, I am pressing reasonably hard in my sketch. What you actually want to create is a really, really light sketch. You want to really easily be able to erase your grid lines at the end. And you want to be left with sketch outlines that are so light you can barely see them. You don't want them to show through the color pencil at the end. You don't want to have all the pencil lines showing. So once I've taken the time to get the sketch drawn out, I can then think about adding some color. And I always like to start with the eyes. I personally do this whether I'm drawing a person or an animal. I just think it looks a little bit creepy if you don't start with the eyes. So what I'm doing here is picking the closest color that I have in my set to her iris. So this lady has some sort of greeny blue eyes. So that's the color I've selected. And I can just really lightly put something down. It doesn't need to be a perfect match. I literally just want to have a color down on the paper. So I can very lightly add this in. I don't wanna press hard, I want to build a lot of colors over the top of this. And then I'll do the same with the black pencil, again, just to mark in the pupil so we can kind of see what's gonna to need to go where. And then I want to start, generally speaking, working from the lighter colors towards the darker colors. So I can start off by very lightly putting down a light color of the cold gray. Generally speaking, you'll find that the whites of the eyes are firstly not really white and secondly have a colder, cooler tone to them. So I'm gonna block in the whole area with this very light gray. And then I can use a slightly darker cold gray to start adding some extra shading. So for example, on this lady's eye towards the left is a bit darker. It's also generally darker around the edge. And then it's a bit lighter towards the middle, sort of in the top middle section. So I can work around that. And these eyes look very peculiar at this point, but don't worry about that. As we start adding in all of the other colors, it will come together. So then we're working our way from the lighter colors towards the darker colors. So here I've moved on to a pink to fill in not only her tear ducts, but a few of the sort of little squiggly veins, I guess, on her eyes. And then I want to begin to adjust the color of her iris. So adding a little bit more green to this, you'll see I'm still pressing really lightly. And then I can start using some warmer grays and maybe going back over the black to really start defining her eyes. I'm just building it up little bit by little bit. So now I'm happy with what I've got down for now on her actual eyes. From here, I want to start filling in some of the skin around her eyes. So I can begin by putting down a very light color of that same pink 
that I used for the tear duct, just to put something down on the paper that I can build from. Then I can start to fill in the key shadows with the burnt sienna. This is a kind of reddish brown. Really starting to map in those lights and darks here. And then I'm still thinking about working from the lighter colors towards the darker colors. So this is quite a dark brown now that I can use to just map in her eyebrows and go back over some of the lines that I made with that sienna brown, but making some of them a little bit darker. Now I'm gonna go over the skin a little bit more in a second when we're drawing the rest of her face. Right now I'm only focusing on getting something down on her eyes. I think it's important to mention that I'm not trying to get anything looking perfect at this point. I literally just want to get something down. Now before I move on to the rest of her skin, it's gonna be a bit easier for me to visualize if I draw in her eyelashes. And I'm just really taking note on my reference photo of the sort of direction the eyelashes are curling in. And then all I'm doing is making some very light flicks with my pencil, with a nice and sharp pencil. So once I'm happy for now with the eyes, I can move on to beginning to map out the rest of her face. And I want to start off by putting down a very light covering of this kind of light pink color. It's the same color that I used earlier. Now the key here is to work really, really lightly. All I want to do is start mapping out the key shapes, the lights and darks. I'm not worrying too much about the color, although I did pick this color because it's kind of the closest color I have to her skin tone on the whole but I wouldn't say it necessarily matches her skin tone. Now the main thing I'm wanting to do here to begin with is get this down as lightly as possible and as always there are a few ways that I'm going about this. First off you'll notice that I'm holding the pencil much further back than you might expect. If I hold it all the way down the pencil here it's literally going to be impossible for me to press too hard. I'm also making sure I've got a really lovely and sharp pencil. It goes down much smoother in my experience if you do. And from here, I like to pick the most obvious color that I think is missing from the skin. So for example, right now she's got a lot of dark gray under her eyes. So I can use that slightly darker cool gray to just add a little hint of it under here. And then I'm gonna use the burnt sienna to mark in the key shapes of her face. So mark in where all of the shadows are. And this is essentially what's going to create the shape of her face. So for example, she's got some shadows around the edge of her face. Darker shadows are also making up the shape of her nose. And I generally like to start at the top and work my way down. Now I can use the marks that I added in from my sketch outlines to help me here. Now it does look a little bit peculiar right now, but all I'm really wanting to do is just get something down, something beginning to be mapped out. If I can follow my sketch, then that is going to be key. So I can also use the same color to map in the key shadows on her lip. From here, I can just go about building up all of these colors more. So going back over the underside of her eyes, really filling in more of that gray. And actually there's quite a few other areas of gray that I can see on her face. So I can lightly add that in as well. From there, I can see that she's missing some dark brown under her eyes and just generally I can start building up the shadows around her eyes and also build up a lot of the shadows around her nose. Now, there's a few things to really bear in mind here. Firstly, for every single color that I add in, I'm always pressing lightly. I find that I go back to a lot of the same colors time and time again, building them up bit by bit and gradually it builds up a face and a skin tone. If I started pressing really hard as I was doing this, I simply wouldn't be able to keep building up that color. So I'm literally every step of the way only thinking about the color that I need to add next. So for example, right now I wanna add a little bit more of a pink tone. Then I want to add a bit more shadow around her eyes. And then I feel that doing that has shown how the whites of her eyes are too light. So I can add more gray in these areas. And then from here, I think she's missing a little hint of yellow and I can add some of that. And it is literally a case of comparing my drawing to my reference photo and thinking about what the main color is that's missing. 
Now I think it's worth bearing in mind that you expect, in my experience, quite a long period of what I'm gonna call an ugly duck. Right now, this doesn't look like it's going to turn into a decent portrait. To be honest, I think she looks a little bit kind of ill. There's something about her coloring that isn't looking great, but I'm just gonna keep building it up. Generally speaking, I'm using the same few colors. I'm using that pink. I'm using a kind of reddish brown. I'm also using a couple of different grays and a darker brown. And generally speaking, I'm just alternating through these few colors to build up her face and her skin. It's very much just a case of trusting that it will turn out okay and you need to keep going. So once I've got something down for her face, I then want to start thinking about adding in her hair. Now I don't think the skin is finished at this point. I am going to need to add quite a lot more to it, but it's gonna be much easier to see what's missing once her hair is filled in. Now there's a few keys to drawing hair. I'm gonna briefly cover them. First off, you want to be working in clumps rather than thinking about drawing individual hairs. So when you look at a head of hair, it naturally sorts in into sections. If you draw those sections together, it will create the illusion of lots of strands of hair. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the lightest color that I can see in her hair and just creating some little flicking motion. So I'm just brushing my pencil back and forth against the paper, a nice and sharp pencil, to begin building up some of that hair texture. And I'm focusing right now on drawing that first clump at the top really looking at the direction of the hair and trying to create flicks in that same direction. I can then move on to the next section and try and do the same thing. Now in terms of the color, generally speaking, what I like to do is start at the lightest colors and work my way towards the darker colors. So the lightest color that I think matches her hair is this one, this is raw umber. It's kind of a very light yellowish brown. I literally work over the whole of her hair, filling in this texture. I can then move on to the next darker color and I want to do exactly the same thing, but filling in the slight slightly darker areas. So here I'm adding in some of that sienna brown again, that burnt sienna, the reddish brown. And I'm once again working in flicking motions over the whole of her hair. I'm taking note of any darker spots she's got. So any darker sections in her hair and I can fill that in a little bit more and build up the color a bit more. From here I want to move on to the next darkest color. So this is a darker brown and I'm once again going over those darker spots. You can see that this is really beginning to build up some hair. It still looks too pale at the moment and if anything it's somehow making her skin look paler. But again don't worry about that. We can always go over and adjust these colors a bit later. I think it's better for it to be too pale than too dark. So once I've gone over the whole of her hair with these flicking motions, I then want to start thinking about making everything more vibrant, adding more color into it. So to start with, I want to really increase the contrast. So right now, the darkest color that's on her hair is quite a dark brown, but it's not dark enough. So I'm using the black pencil to build up the color a little bit more. Now actually, I'm not using the flicking motion here because I'm happy with the amount of texture I've built up. What I want to do is focus on the contrast and kind of smooth out the hair a little bit. In my experience, if you exclusively use flicking motions, the hair ends up looking a little bit scratchy. So I tend to start working in these light circular motions over the top. You can still see the hair texture, but it just kind of softens everything. So after building up a lot of the black, it's looking better from a contrast point of view, but it's still just looking a little bit too pale. So then I can again use these circular motions to start building up some of the darker brown, really adding to what I've got here, just gradually building everything up a little bit more. And then I can again think about the main color that I think is missing from here. So for example, I wanna add some gray to the top and then I can adjust the whole color of her hair by making it a bit richer. It needs to be a little bit more of a reddish brown. And then I can again adjust it by adding a little bit of pink I've added here just to warm her hair up. Now I think her hair is looking much, much better. It's looking more vibrant and it's made it far easier to see what needs to be adjusted on her skin. So I'm going to go back to her skin now and we can make everything a lot more vibrant and hopefully smooth things out. 
And I'm gonna keep working through. So now on the drawing as a whole, really thinking about, again, the main color that's missing. So to start with, I wanna make her face a lot warmer. She's looking a bit poorly with how pale and cold her skin looks. So I can be adding in some of this quite bright pink and then redefining a lot of the shadows on her face with the dark brown. So adding that pink over the top has meant that a lot of the shadows I think are looking a bit too muted. So I can go back over those. And then I want to warm things up again, but maybe add a slight yellowish tone. So actually I can use that yellowish brown that I put on her hair to start to really build up that skin a bit more. Now it is important to be doing this again, really lightly with the pencil. We're still building up a lot of layers and we still want to be doing that gradually. We want to try and make it as smooth as possible. And I'm just gonna keep working my way through all of these colors, building up the skin bit by bit until I'm generally happy with the overall skin color. And I think it what it really needs is smoothing out. So what I want to do is blend this all together with the white pencil. And actually I've stopped pressing lightly here. I'm pressing really very firmly. I want to use this white to mix everything together and smooth it out. And you can see that although it's lightening what I've got here a little bit, it's not actually making a huge difference to her overall skin tone. So it can almost work like a blender pencil. So I want to be using this to go over particularly the lighter areas. I'm not so much going over the dark patches under her eyes, for example. I can maybe use a slightly darker pencil for that. But I basically want to blend all of her her skin so that she's looking nice and smooth and then from there I can start thinking again about the main color that's missing so I can put a very light covering of the pink over the top and maybe a little bit of purple under her eyes to just brighten that up now you'll find that once you've blended the skin together, it's not as easy to put other colors over the top. You can still put a little bit of color over the top, but not to the same degree. So I'm just gonna focus now on adding some extra shading around her eyes. That's the main thing now that I think is missing. And maybe add a little bit more pink again. I just want to be adding in the final touches, the final sort of brightening up of her skin. And then the absolute last thing that I always do when I'm drawing a portrait is add in all of the little detailed baby hairs. These are the details that I really think do make the difference. You certainly notice if they're not there. So what you want to focus on is picking a really good reference photo with some brilliant contrast and a lot of detail, and then taking the time to get a really accurate sketch on the paper. From there, I always like starting with the eyes and kind of get something marked in, working from, generally speaking, the lighter colors towards the darker colors. Remember that you can always add more color later on, you can adjust what's there. From here, I like to start mapping out the face, filling in the base layer, I just want to get the main lights and darks marked in and this is going to shape the face. From there I can begin brightening things up, comparing my drawing to the reference photo and thinking about what the main colour is that's missing. Always making sure that I'm working in really light layers so I can build up a lot of the colour. From there, I can map out the hair, get the general shape right here as well, before increasing the vibrancy of the hair, really building up the contrast. And then I can go back to the skin one more time to just adjust the colors. Now, I think the most important thing to remember when drawing portraits with color pencils is that you don't expect to just suddenly have amazing looking skin tones. You have to build them up gradually. So don't be concerned if it looks a little bit odd to begin with. Keep going and I think you'll find that the skin color particularly will come together. Now don't forget I go through this in a lot more detail on my Skillshare course and you can get that 30 day free trial. I hope you found this video helpful. Happy drawing guys and I'll see you in the next one.